We also have the lipid hypothesis. Scientific opinion was that the consumption of fat and dietary cholesterol was responsible for the rising rates of heart disease. This idea started in the 1950s. And it was embraced by the American Heart Association. And in 1961, they came out with what they called the prudent diet. It was low in fat and cholesterol from animal products. Senator McGovern, he was from South Dakota, which is a large state for cattle ranching and, and meat growing, obviously. He was actually voted out of office connected with this whole thing. He got voted out by the beef lobby because the prudent diet was talking about reducing your consumption of meat and dairy. And he dared to say you shouldn't be eating meat and dairy. And of course the cattle ranchers got together, a political action group, and he was gone. They changed then politically and they don't talk about specific foods. They now say choose meats, poultry, and fish that will reduce your saturated fat intake rather than saying don't eat certain things. Speak no more of foods only certain nutrients. We also, of course, have the sugar lobby. The sugar lobby recommended that 25% of our calories come from free sugars. The World Health Organization says it should be no more than 10%. The U.S. sugar lobby worked with the Bush administration to cut WHO funding unless they changed to their way of thinking. So again, these types of decisions are not made according to what's really best for your health, they're decided on what's best for somebody's pocketbook. Butter versus margarine. We all know that margarine was a cheap and inferior substitute for butter. It's a fake food. To do this, we blast healthy vegetable oil with hydrogen to make it spreadable, and it also extends its shelf life. These are some things that manufacturers obviously like. When they make it into a hydrogenated oil, they form trans fatty acids. And unfortunately, the trans fatty acids are more dangerous than what they're supposed to replace. So we have food adulteration. In the 1800s, there were five states that passed laws that oleomargarine must be dyed pink. No one was going to be fooled into thinking it was real food or real butter. And in 1938, the Food, Drug, and Cosmetic Act said that all imitation food must be labeled as imitation so people would know it was actually a fake food. But in 1973, the food industry got that law thrown out. Surprisingly, the American Heart Association was instrumental in helping the fake food ball get thrown out. They wanted modified food for what they believed were health advantages. They pushed for hydrogenated vegetable oils. The American Heart Association wanted us to have more hydrogenated fats, which actually caused more heart attacks. Is it good for you? Strangely enough, a banana can make no health claims, but cereal can. Recently, the Mars Corporation endowed a chair in chocolate science at the University of California, Davis we'll soon see the FDA-approved health claims on candy bars, but not on food. Your good diet is making you sick. We got fatter between the end of World War II and 1976, but we actually reduced our consumption of animal fat intake during that time. We cut out lard, we cut out beef tallow. We increased fat from vegetable oils like margarine and hydrogenated oils. We tried to eat what we believed was the prudent diet, and it's killing us. So we have this lipid hypothesis. 60 years we've been trying to reform the way we eat. Dietary fat is responsible for chronic disease. This has made not only our food worse, but our bodies and our health worse. We are fatheads. The human brain is 60% fat. Every neuron in your brain is sheathed with a layer of fat. Without fat in the diet, you couldn't absorb fat-soluble vitamins like A, D, K, E. Um, you can't pass through the intestinal wall unless you have that fat. Fats also protect your heart from heart disease. Oh, you can't see the forest. For half a century, we've been replacing fat in our diets with carbohydrates. And the lipid hypothesis blames heart disease, obesity, cancer, diabetes, and so on on fat. But the real cause is the refined carbohydrates.
friendly fire. Obesity and diabetes are the unintentional consequences of the war against dietary fat. In 1998, the New England Journal uh, of Medicine came out and said that most of the decline in deaths from heart disease were not the cause of dietary changes, of lifestyle changes, but it was changes in medicine that recognized and treated the heart disease first. And so now you don't die from a heart attack. You live with heart disease. You're on medication for the rest of your life.